My name is Gwen and I'm a technical animator. This is a slightly extended cut version of the talk I gave at GDC this year for tips and tricks. For this talk, I'm showcasing techniques using this character here, Scout. She's a character we used for prototyping at the Molasses Flood for a while. When I was setting her up initially, my goal was to make a character that required absolutely no transition animations at all. A transition animation would be when you animate moving from one loop, like a walk or a run cycle, to another loop, like an idle. Um, I find when you actually animate the transitions, you have to, it kills your iteration because you have to constantly go back and update those transition animations whenever you update the source or destination loop. So to accomplish this, what I did was I made four animations for her. There's an idle, a walk, a run, and a kind of hard run stop animation. The hard run stop animation isn't actually a transition animation. You can update the source or destination loop without having to update that animation at all. I just really wanted the flair of her throwing her, back, her bag back on her back when she stopped. If you look at this video, you'll see that the moment Scout stops moving, the foot she has planted on the ground stays in the ground. The foot that's in the air plants, and Scout shifts her weight onto the newly planted foot. She then slides her originally planted foot along the ground to match where it needs to be for the idol. And this works regardless of what her foot facing is when she decides to stop moving. To accomplish this, I have two float tracks in the walk animation. One for the right foot and one for the left foot. I set the float to 1 when a foot is planted on the ground, and 0 when it's in the air. When Scout stops moving, I freeze the walk animation and I query these float tracks to see if a given foot is planted or not. I also have a remain planted float track in the hard stop animation. This track is 1 for the first half of the animation and blends to zero over the time I want Scout to move her planted foot to its idle position. So all I do is I multiply the is planted float track for each foot in the locomotion animation by the remain planted track in the hard stop animation. And I use that value between zero and one to drive the uh, blend for the IK target bone in her legs. So the result is this. Using this strategy, I can update the run cycle without having to update the stop animation at all. Um, however, you did notice I had to use IK in order to get this to work, right? And I, I usually do that. I typically have IK running on all my characters, and I set up IK in a similar fashion for all the characters I make. I actually have bones in the rig for the leg IK targets. These bones are constrained to the ankle bones, but are parented under the root of the character. Since these bones are in the rig, they're automatically exported for every animation I make. At any time, I can query where the feet should be in root relative space by querying the location of these bones. I also have bones parented under the root for the pull vectors of the leg IK. We have pull vectors in Maya. We already, as animators, figure out where we want the pull vector to be. So why not just export that, that data and have it available in Engine to drive your in-game IK as well? I use IK for the run stop, but I use it for many other things as well. Like right here, I'm using it to create kind of a fast and dirty slope variation. Uh, what I did here is I parented those IK target bones under a slope detection bone and that bone is parented under the root of the character. Every tick I raycast down from the character and find the normal angle of the world, and I rotate the world orientation bone to match this angle. This is super fast, it's super easy to set up. Uh, it doesn't give you the best results, but it gets you pretty close. It gets you most of the way there for very little effort. Another thing you'll notice is that her feet are blending into Ingame IK when she steps in the ground, but are unaltered when she's in the air. If she steps off the ground or if she jumps, uh, her feet are in FK and the Ingame IK is turned off. To do this, I actually export the IKFK switch from Maya as a float variable, so I have that in game, and I use that variable to drive the in-game IKFK switch as well. I figure we're already, we're usually moving between FK and IK in Maya. Why not just have that information also drive if we're in IK in game? What this does mean when I'm working in Maya, I'm thinking as I blend into IK, oh, the feet might be conforming to the ground, they might be slightly edited, and I keep that in mind when I'm animating that blend. Speaking of jumps, a traditional jump has you using a kind of looping fall animation, and when the character strikes the ground, you quickly blend into a landing animation. I think this kind of looks bad. You don't really have a lot of time to give the character weight when you land. So instead, I tried something else. This is something I kind of stole from a Paragon talk that Laurent did. Um, I animate the landing animation from a much higher point off the ground, and I actually have the feet make contact with the ground, reaching outside of the pill. Uh, and touching the ground early. This gives me a couple more frames to play with for the landing animation. Uh, in order to make this work so that she doesn't actually fall through the world, I query the distance the player is from the ground as she's landing, and I select a frame of the animation to play based on that distance from the ground. 
This animation does not play forward. Instead, I'm always constantly selecting a frame of this animation based on a parameter, in this case, the distance from the ground, and that parameter just happens to be changing as she lands. So this landing animation starts 100 units off the ground, so if the character is falling, I take the distance from the ground, divide it by 100, and play that frame of the animation. The frame of the animation is that percentage through the animation. I don't play the, the landing animation. This is very important. I select a pose from this animation based on an input variable that is changing. And this is powerful because the designer can now change the arc of the jump, the speed of the jump. Scout can fall with different velocities, but her feet will always land perfectly and not penetrate through the ground. I found this technique to be really useful. I've used it in other things as well. For instance, turn and place animations. I always really disliked the way those are set up. You generally have a lot of animations kind of blending together in some kind of hot mess. Instead, what I did was this. I made one turn and place animation that has her turning 360 degrees, and I never play this animation. Instead, I query the world space orientation of the character, and I use that to select a frame of this animation to play. So Scout, while Scout is rotating, this animation is playing. If she rotates um, to the left instead of to the right, then the animation will play backwards. If she rotates at different speeds, then this animation will uh, play forward or backwards at different speeds. Here you're seeing there's a matching animation where her feet are constantly grounded to the ground. That's useful for when she stops. So when Scout's moving, I'm playing an animation from, I'm selecting a frame from that turn in place animation. And when she stops moving, I blend to the same frame in the same location in a foot-planted version of the animation. And the result is what you see here. It allows the player to do some really unpredictable motions, but her feet will always kind of make sense and always conform to the ground.